My name is Jason, and today we'll be talking about nozzle theory, rockets, and just why exactly rocket science is so hard. Let's get started. So how exactly do rockets work? Well, most rockets today basically run off of giant fires. You have a fuel, like gasoline, and an oxidizer, like oxygen. And when they react, they release hot gases. But why are hot gases significant? It's all because of Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Think of it kind of like a bullet shot from a gun. As the bullet travels out of the gun in one direction, you feel a force or a recoil in the other direction. But a flaming pile of hot gases isn't exactly useful, so our first step is containment. This is the combustion chamber. It simply contains the expanding gases created when the fuel and the oxidizer burn. The total force exerted by a rocket engine is simply the mass flow rate or just the amount of stuff that goes to the rocket engine multiplied by the gas exit velocity or just how fast the gas is traveling at once it leaves the engine. So, if you have a fixed amount of fuel going through your rocket engine and you want to increase thrust, you just increase exit velocity. And this is where nozzles come in. Initially, a nozzle works by forcing the gas into a smaller and smaller area, and this increases its velocity. Wondering why? You can actually see this phenomenon happening in everyday life. The hose itself represents the combustion chamber, while the water inside represents the gases. As I partially plug the hose with my fingers, I'm effectively decreasing the area, and as you can see, the water is traveling a lot faster than it was before. Now, imagine accelerating the gas until it reaches the speed of sound. Now something very interesting happens as the flow turns supersonic. The gas velocity increases as the area increases as well. And smart rocket scientists in the past realized they can combine these two concepts to maximize their exit velocities. This is called the converging diverging nozzle, and the area where they meet is called the throat. But look, I'm gonna break it too. There are many, many, many equations that go into designing a nozzle, and I can't possibly compress them all into a single video. And that's why I linked the Python code I wrote in the description, so you too can make your own rocket engine. Anyways, that's enough theory for now, so why not put this to the test in a simulation? This is a contour of the simulation results for velocity color coded. There are two things that can tell us that our nozzle design succeeded. Using the color code, you can see that as the gases expand to the throat, they approach the speed of sound. Also, these little bumps you see outside of the nozzle, those are called mock diamonds, and they're a good sign that our flow has gone supersonic. Plus, aren't they just pretty? Anyways, I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching!